throw me here. So yes, this is the recap for Scream Season 2, Episode 2. And the episode starts off essentially kind of talking about, well, it's centered around a couple of things. So we'll go from that vein. We have Noah, who's still on his uh, conspiracy theory plot. And because right now, Audrey is constantly getting um, messages. And those messages are all about, okay, I know what you did. I know what you did. I clearly know who you are. Uh, sooner or later, the truth is going to come out. So why don't you go and do us all a favor and just release it. Just release it. Just release it. And by doing so, I won't have to out you. And so Audrey, when she's at school, she's looking at people who could possibly be texting her right now because she's thinking it's someone in her grade. And she's probably not wrong. You know, a lot of people are going to think that it's gonna the police officer's son. I don't think so. I think that's way too easy. I think that he's just a fanatic just like Noah is, but I don't think that he did anything. Some people are going to think, oh crap, maybe it's um, Kieran's cousin. Yeah, Kieran's cousin. Kieran's cousin is there now, and he actually, I believe he originally interacted with, oh, what's her name, with Emma in this episode, and because he knew Emma, he knew stuff about her, and it was just like, wait a minute, do you go to this school? Type of thing. Like me, girls. He doesn't even go to this school, type of thing. Well, no, he doesn't go to the school yet. But since his mother is, of course, officially Kieran's guardian, now it's this whole situation of Kieran originally was ratted out that he was living alone because uh, he was just living alone. So his aunt had to come up and, of course, vouch for him. The police officer is like, okay, so you're here now. So... They're good. We're good, right? It's like, yeah, we're good. So, long story short, originally we thought Karen was possibly going to have to go down to, I believe, Atlanta and live there. And so he actually called up, um, called up em Emma. And Emma was like, look, I miss you. I'm sorry. I know I'm being weird right now. Originally, they were supposed to potentially kind of hook up and have sex. That didn't work out too well because Emma is just on this, she's still reaming from her PTSD, and Noah slept on the couch the first time. The second time, they did have sex. They had sex in his car because she came over to go and just try to talk to him because, again, he gave her a call saying, you know, I'm going to be leaving. Uh, and so Emma was freaking out. She was telling her mom because he was the only person I could talk to. Stabbed to her mom. She was just like, yeah, I understand, baby. So it's just like, no, he's still going to be there. Yes, at least they got over the hump as far as humping each other. That finally happened. No one realizes that the Jake is dead yet. That's hilarious to me. No one realizes that the Jake is dead yet. And I'm wondering, so when is that going to happen? When is that going to happen? Because that's really important that we figure out, okay, Jake's dead. Who the hell is texting um, Brooke? Who the hell is texting Brooke? Because Brooke is irritated because it's like, even though I broke up with the Jake, he still should be hitting me up because it, it's been like two days now. So that's like 10 days to a normal person. So where is he? And so she goes, gives him a text, and she actually goes as far to go to the police, the police office, to the police station to fill out a missing persons report. And while she's there, the police officer's son, who is in, of course, Brooke's grade and actually her class and keeps looking at Emma, and I forgot to mention in my first recap that he has a drawing of Emma. He's been drawing Emma. He's a little obsessed over the Lakewood Six because he also talks to Noah. He says to Noah, you know, ow, ow, that hurt. You know what? Um, you're seeing it all wrong. You know, a serial, serial killer would do this and would do that. And Noah's a little bug. He's bugging out because he's like, damn, how can someone be more of a fanatic than I am? Speaking of school, since we're already at school, Emma still has her PTSD, and she's still having flashes, and she needs to talk with this teacher. This teacher is crookedy. I'm like, wait a minute, is this teacher a reporter, or is she just... Because she goes and she gives te the teacher the note, because her teacher gave her this note, which was like, you know, if you ever need to talk type of thing. So she uses it, they go to the coffee house, they talk about her having these, uh... She's bugging out because she went to this house 
with Brooke, and you know what was there? Nothing was there. Well, no, there were pictures of her. Pictures of her, pictures of her friends, well, pictures of her. And so she bugged out the first time. She went back to the house, nothing was there. She was like, I should be concerned because what's going on? And the reason why she even brings this up is because when they're in class, they discuss the fact that, you know, we use dreams to try to work through our mess. So Emma figured maybe I need to go and talk with someone who's I, um, an expert in things like that. So she, her teacher's just like, look, Emma, of course, if you ever need to talk again, we're good, but I don't think that, uh, I think that you could be hallucinating. Yes, you could be hallucinating. And again, while this is going on, Emma's being recorded, so I don't know if that's for school purposes or if that's for some nefarious purposes. We have to keep that in the back of our minds. Noah has Emma on his broadcast. Now, again, that could have been in episode one, but Emma gives a very general uh, statement, and Emma... I think it's part of her way of getting back her power. Um, speaking of the podcast, there's someone who reached out to Noah saying that he has information for him regarding Piper's accomplice. So Audrey goes and intercepts that because Noah, of course, Noah with his big mouth, is like, <laughs> and so he goes, gives Audrey the information. Audrey goes and um, makes sure that this guy isn't able to tell Noah anything because she's just like, I know who you are. You've seen what my um, accomplice did. So don't think that I can't do it the same. <sighs> so it was just like, okay. Okay. I believe you. You, you, you seem incredibly crazy. So I, I believe you. I really do. And with that being said, poor thing, poor, poor thing. Uh, Noah gets railroaded and he's not able to get information from the guy like he thought he could. Now, uh, what else is going on? What what else, what else is good to mention? Uh, Brooke could be in danger because, like I said, the Jake is dead. But clearly, the person who killed him has his phone. So that person is texting Brooke to make sure that Brooke one doesn't do anything stupid, like fill out a police report. Because when she was at the station, she got a take from the Jake. Two could be where she's not going to get attacked again. Or is she? No, because when she went to the place where it was just like, come to my house, uh, she went to this house and he basically stood her up and she was pissed. What else happened? What else happened? There's this new girl, this new, I'm going to say black. She's like brown, like light brown. She's really cute, but I'm thinking to myself, I forgot her name. I don't know her name for the episode three. She's going to be a part of this foolery. I don't know if she's eventually going to get killed off. She's probably, unfortunately, eventually going to get killed off. But she's super smart and super, super nerdy, just like Noah. So that's going to be Noah's love interest. Hell, Noah might lose his virginity. Wait, did Noah lose his virginity? Or No, I think Noah's still a virgin. So Noah might lose her his virginity to her. And she wants to work with Emma because she's like, Emma, you're really smart. But the thing is, I thought you were even smarter than me, but right now, you're just psychologically messed up. You need to get yourself together. And, like I said before, Emma is still dealing with the fact that she went to this house because it was in her dreams, and she talks with her mom. Her mom goes and tells her, you know what, baby girl? I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but you've been to that house before. Here's the long story short. After the um, slasher family, after their dude was killed, their relative was killed, their family member was killed, we had to deal with the fact that people were being super mean to them and they couldn't move anywhere, they couldn't go anywhere, so they had to just basically get a little bit farther out of town until they could regroup. And while they were doing that, I felt really bad for them. So I used to go over there and then see if they were okay, and I used to bring you there too. So it makes sense why you had recollection of that um, house farmhouse, so to speak, because you've been there before. I was just like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. You know, I just didn't want to put any more on you because I was trying to protect you, but I realized that I need to go and face things head on with you. So she brought Emma back to the house and there was nothing there. And of course, you already know that by now. But um, Emma is followed out, out of the coffee house. And when she's followed out, out of the coffee house, 
she starts to bug. I mean, she's running, but she's running like, girl, where are you trying to go? Because I'm like, if you were really scared, you would have been like, yo, I'm out of here. No, no. Long story short, she's in the middle of the road. And she's like, what do you want from me? I'm like, try again. I didn't believe it that time. What do you want from me? Hold on, let's take a water break. Excuse me. Me, 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 me. What do you want from me? There we go. Yeah, that's how she should have done it. But it was her father. You know, well, her father. And he's back in town. And so she's just like, Schmurf? Like, what's going on here? Why are you here? Poor kid. What? what? And he's just like, you know, I'm sorry, baby girl. I know that I didn't do right by you because things got crazy. Things got complicated with your mom. Com got very complicated with everything else. And so that's why I bounced. But if you need me, I'm here. And so that's going to be interesting. That's going to be an interesting turn of events. What if her dad gets killed? I didn't even think of that, but what if her dad gets killed? But long story short, that was pretty much the synopsis of this episode. So leave a comment below. Let me know who do you think killed, um, who do you think is, is framing Audrey? Because this person has a lot of dirt on her. And I'm like, there's a lot of people that could have been watching her close, 